a shout out hello to those of uh, you that are watching us online right now on Rebel TV. Everybody, thank you for joining us for our May Board of Education meeting. And the first order is called order. The second is invocation. And at this time, I'll ask uh, Reverend Scott Mathis to come to the front, please, and lead us in the invocation. Mr. Mathis, Reverend Mathis. tonight's meeting itself, and second is to approve the minutes. Those minutes are from April 9th, 2020, and they are included, so Mr. Inslee will go ahead and open that up for us and scroll through those. Thank you, Mr. Inslee. Mr. Chair, I make a recommendation to approve the items on the consent agenda as presented. Can the Chair have a motion to approve the minutes of the consent agenda? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Everybody unanimous. Thank you, sir. Next item is a review of monthly information updates and um, out of interest of, of time we've consolidated for this month items that uh, would normally appear as individual board meeting agenda items and these three are school governance team updates, school happenings, and the facilities update. So the first, the school governance team update, if Ms. Rigdon, if you'll please come up to the front and give us a quick review of the information that's included here. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, board. We do have a little bit of information to share about school governance teams, uh, team meetings. Uh, we have not really had any face-to-face -face meetings. The principals have been communicating, though, with their school governance team members if they've had things that they need uh, feedback on, such as their school improvement goals for next year and items such as that. But we had already met our six uh, required times during the school year, and so they have not had business to conduct, and so they've not had face-to-face uh, -face meetings in the last little bit. There was an email approval for a, a fundraiser at Fannie Middle that was just sent through the email. Uh, other things that are going on in school governance right now that are kind of exciting is we're in the midst of our spring uh, elections. Every school has an elected parent that will be selected uh, this uh, spring. All of the parents are qualified to run uh, by taking part in an orientation training that was available online. Also, people in past years have also been qualified to run as a parent. Um, those elections are being scheduled right now. Um, also, three of our schools have a faculty member who will be elected this spring. West Fannin, um, let's see, West Fannin, East Fannin, and Fannin County High School 
the high school only had one uh, staff member who asked to be on the ballot, and so that election has already happened since they were running unopposed. Okay, thank you. Does anybody have any questions on the school governance team update for Ms. Rigdon? Okay, the next item, Ms. Rigdon, is school happenings, and uh, on behalf of Mr. Sophie, principals were excused from this evening's meeting, so would you speak to this item? Absolutely. And tonight, it was the turn of our high school principal to do the school happenings for the month. As you know, every single uh, school board meeting through the school year, we do have a presenting principal, and the main one was Mr. Shopey. He typically likes to do the main one because he gets to share with you the cool stuff that's going on at the high school, especially related to uh, graduation. I know that you've already had the opportunity to do this in uh, advance. It's about 18 minutes, and it's extremely informative. And so the folks at home might want to click the link and enjoy it as well. Certainly. Those of you in the audience who haven't seen this or those folks that are watching us on Rebel TV, I encourage you to take time to watch this video from Eric Shelby about school happening second semester at Fannie County High School. All right. Uh, any questions from Ms. Rigdon on that? Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Rigdon. Mr. Danner, can you speak to C facilities update? Good evening, board. Uh, again, just like Ms. Rickon said, I know hopefully y'all got to review this. Um, uh, this is just not a TV on the wall. The only thing about this is we've consolidated all of our uh, old analog cameras into digital cameras. Uh, every, uh, of course, admin has this capability as long as the office staff, the office staff can, uh, can view cameras now. We, uh, that is the entrance at Blue Ridge Elementary. So if, um, office staff sees something there that doesn't look right, they can lock down the system using our salt. So that means that they're using the cameras that are funded with SPLOS and they're able to remotely lock down the building with the electronic locking system that was funded with SPLOS to keep that kids safe. Correct. That is correct. Uh, we'll just go through very quickly. Uh, door at Blue Ridge was, uh, um, uh, was new there at Blue Ridge at the, at the entrance. Notice it's got the salt lock on it. And we'll go quick on these, Robert. Uh, that was a wish list from uh, from Ms. Hodge, Dr. Hodges, also buzz-ins there at Blue Ridge. We've got three buzz-ins now, so every door at Blue Ridge is now locked. Um, this was very exciting at East Van. This is one of uh, Mr. Price's wish lists. Uh, Y'all have been to the, the outdoor classroom, so again, here's a couple pictures that were taken last week uh, just for board, uh, for the board meeting to get everything in there. It was actually out there today, and it absolutely is amazing. So if you get a chance, run by East Van and, and look at uh, about the 80% project completed out there. So again, that's uh, Mr. Price spoke him today and he's just ecstatic. Uh, West Van, uh, again, just a, a shelf that was moved from, from one room to the other. Uh, not just a, you know, a two-person job. Our maintenance got involved on it. That's where it was actually located. This room is actually going to become a counselor's office. Uh, now just moving things around there at West. Uh, utility sink there has been on the wish list for several years. Uh, so again, since all this time, had some uh, actually some time to uh, do the utility sink there. Um, don't look at the school bus on the wall. Actually, that was a the old radiator heaters that's been removed. There were several radiators uh, that are not being used at West. Uh, they requested to get rid of them. So again, maintenance was out there uh, removing I think six of the radiator heaters. Uh, another wish list item for West: uh, gym getting painted. Uh, again, so that's a new gymnasium there at West that's uh, got a fresh coat of paint. Uh, middle school, uh, bathroom there, that goes into a conference room. The staff uses those restrooms. Uh, so if they're having meetings just to the right of that picture, it interrupts the, the meeting. So uh, Mr. Knuckles asked about getting a door in there. Of course, we've got that installed. Uh, salt holes on it as well. Uh, this is the, the security film. Uh, at the, This is a picture at the middle school. Uh, he's at... He's at uh, uh, He's at Blue Ridge. He was there yesterday. I think he actually got completed today. So the only school that's left to get the second phase of the security film will be the high school, and he'll start on it next week. So we've done a lot more security film. Uh, again, another door there at the middle school kitchen. Uh, we was going to put salt on it per Mr. Knuckles' request. Uh, when we went to install salt over, the door pretty much was about to fall in. So we're going to have to get a whole new door replaced there, uh, again, with salt on it. Uh, ADA ramp back to middle school, coming out of the Connections Hall, going down to the football field or the playground. It used to just be a step. Uh, so again, uh, per, again, another wish list from Mr. Knuckles is to make it ADA compliant. Uh, wish list item, 
It used to be just a mud pit there. Uh, kids used to go down through that mud. Of course, that's without the grass that's on there, so that's a concrete poured sidewalk so the kids can actually get to the buses there without getting mud all over them and coming out of it. High school uh, behind the CK building at the greenhouse, again, this road was actually caving in. So again, got that repaired uh, uh, because of this, uh, had a, a major drainage problem. So again, that's been repaid, restriped, uh, makes parent pick up a whole lot easier also for the buses. Uh, again, another wish list at the high school, circulation desk and the media center has been removed. Again, this was last week, so again, we're waiting on some uh, some orders to come in and get the carpet replaced. Uh, They're going to remove that orange, aren't they? I'm sorry? They're going to remove that orange, aren't they? The orange has been removed. Uh, I begged and begged and begged, but it's actually been painted. And uh, uh, again, another small painting job there, the actual metal that you really can't see. This was a finished product. The metal up above there was rusting. Uh, so again, we got it sandblasted uh, on up, our rubber, on up, nope, right there, right there, there you go. Uh, so all those beams were, were rusting, so again, got a good facelift. All the doors have been painted uh, for, the, uh, for the new gymnasium there at the high school. Uh, new floors at the high school, A hall, bathrooms, men's and women, it used to be ceramic tile. Uh, concrete was cracking, the tile was cracking and popping up. Uh, so again, that tile is very hard to uh, to match, so it looked like a uh, jigsaw puzzle in there. So again, we got the floors re redone there at the A Hall bathrooms there at the high school. And it's been very busy for the past uh, few weeks. Yeah, these are items that uh, would normally happen during the summertime, uh, but since we knew kids were not coming back into the building, uh, we started working on some of those summer wish lists. So again, this was a lot. Of, of course, not all of them, but the things we knew we could get done pretty quickly. Uh, again, most of those were uh, were wish lists from the principals. So, uh, so again, we got a good head start on summer time. And recently, you've been spending a great deal of time preparing for graduation. Graduation, you know, graduation will be next Friday. Uh, high school uh, called me last week and said, you know, how can we try to have graduation? So uh, we went up and measured uh, the stadium. Um, the, the bleacher section, social distancing, six feet apart. So, uh, uh, per their request, we, we went up and done so. Uh, Dr. Rams and I got together last week, and uh, along with Richard Schofi, and uh, we can pretty much see 360 people on the home side practicing social distancing, 75 on the on the visitor side, and uh, along with governmental meetings, local government, uh, following all the guidelines. Uh, you know, we got the blessing from our local government to, to have a graduation. It's going to be very simulated. Uh, uh, all the fine-tuned details have, have not been, uh, been ironed out yet. But again, talked to uh, Mr. Graham, Robert Graham today. I just talked to Sheriff Kirby today. Uh, so again, the, the, the exact details will be coming out very soon. But again, it's going to be a very limited graduation. Uh, again, I know that um, Mr. Callaway and Dr. Gwaltney have spent a hour or two on the on the high school field the last couple of days there so y'all let y'all speak to that later. Okay. Uh, any questions from Mr. Tanner? Yes. Go ahead, sir. Yes, sir. The the work that's being done at East Stand, is that that field where the timber's been cut? Yes, sir. The the T ball field, not the old baseball high school football field, not that big field. It's the one off to the right, right of the gymnasium where the uh, outdoor classroom was, that lower mm -hmm. field, uh, it was a snake pit, and that's what Mr. Price, that's how he described it. He said, it's a snake pit. I don't want kids going down there. So uh, for his request, got the fence removed, got the bank smoothed out. Uh, uh, I can't wait for next month to show you the pictures of the finished product. Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Thank you, Mr. Denner, thank you. Do we have any public comment, Mr. Denner, item number six? Uh, no, so there's none been signed in, and I spoke to our visitors, and, uh, and they, they said they were just spectating. Okay, thank you, sir. We'll move on to number seven, which is also yours, Mr. Denner. Approve HVAC project, FCHS Old Gym. Uh, yes, uh, yes, sir. Last month, uh, you know, asked the board approval to pursue the air conditioning, uh, the old gym. So we had a, uh, put it on the procurement registry, uh, we had three uh, three companies that 
uh, provided bids for us. That bid opening was Tuesday. Uh, there's the tally sheet, uh, cord, max air, and Mondays. And um, Mondays is the, the low bid, uh, the total price on it. Notice that it's got a base bid and also gas piping replacement. Sorry about that, Robert. And uh, so again, I included all that because the gas pipes are old, they are rusted, and that was highly recommended uh, from all three ones that come in. And uh, so the total price on that for the OGM AC uh, at the high school is $162,031. And that will start immediately uh, if approved tonight. Uh, and if it is approved, it will be paid for out of supplies. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Denner. Mr. Chair, I make that recommendation to approve the old gym HVAC project as presented. Can the board have a motion for the old gym's HVAC project? So moved. Me. Okay. I'll second. Right. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, thank you. The next item is number eight to approve construction manager of risk. Mr. Danner? Yes, sir. Again, you know, this has been an ongoing project um, uh, in trying to name a CM. Uh, you know, a CM at risk is a little bit different than a general contractor. Uh, but again, with the architect's recommendation, he, he re recommended we do a CM at risk. Uh, so again, we sent out uh, an RFQ in March and then an RFP in April. Uh, from those two um, stages of events, the, the committee um, that was designed through a rubric uh, how are, are recommending Bowen and Watson as our uh, CM at risk for the transportation facility and development, staff development center. They're out at Tacoa, Georgia. Uh, we have worked with, the school, school system has worked with them in the past. Uh, this is a follow-up to the approval on February 13th uh, for the approval of a, uh, to pursue the construction manager. And so you got that approval in February and then the RFQ in March, RFP in April, and then here we are to make the recommendation. Mr. Chair, I'll make this recommendation as presented. Mr. Chair, I have a motion for a construction manager at risk. So moved. You have a second. Is there any discussion? I'd like to ask one question. Yes, you sir. did get references on those people, didn't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, we had actually six companies total um, that went through with, on, the first, on the first round. We went through the first round. Uh, and actually the second round, that's when we started checking references. And, uh, and Bowen and Watson did have positive references from multiple yeah. sources. I'm good. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, Mr. Danner. Item number nine, approved purchase of welding booths. This is yours again, Mr. Danner. Welding booths. Uh, but actually, very excited about this one, um, uh, and I think y'all are too. Uh, again, we sent this out not for bids, but for quotes, because quotes, uh, per our DJED policy, uh, did not meet a $100,000 threshold. So we got three quotes uh, uh, from a Clean Air America out of Rome, Georgia, Lincoln Electric, out of Cleveland, Ohio, and Kemper America out of Alpharetta, Georgia. And I'd like to recommend Clean Air America uh, from Rome, $42,660. Uh, again, turnkey project. It's uh, They come in, they install everything, have it set up. We will actually hook up the electrical to it. But again, these are booths that are um, you know, made off-site. They brought on here, you know, put into place. So again, uh, again it'll be paid for out of the spots. Thank you, Mr. Nanner. I'll make the recommendation to approve these welding booths as presented, Mr. Chair. Can the Chair have a motion to approve the welding booths? I'd like to make that motion. I'd like to second it. Is there any discussion? Uh, the picture that's on mine, is yes. that those products? That's it. It does, it does not have to be that lime green yellow. We can choose the, the color, but again, that is the one. Uh, yeah, that picture on it, Robert, the top one, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that one there. Uh, the top section where it says clean air, the, the Evo and all that type of stuff, that's the filter system. Uh, that's the fan. And that one fan 
will filter both boots. Um, uh, so again, that is a, a dual section. You really don't see how big that thing is, but again, it's you know it's five feet uh, uh, five feet wide, 41 inches deep there, 124 inches tall. Um, uh, with the where the filter is, and then the other boots to the right of it without the filter, because that's 83 inches tall. So again, you know, it's going on. Do you see where the gray shelves are in there? Yes. Sir. Is that where you work on your project? Correct. Okay. Correct. Okay. I ain't never had nothing like that, so. <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> where, where will these be located? Sorry, Mr. Brown. This is for three stations. Each station will accommodate two students. Is that correct? Yes, sir. This, this system, you can actually order it in singles. This is a dual system, which means two, two students can work on it. But that one filter system will filter both boots. But yeah, so that, that one that you see there will fit two. So again, we're going to order three of these. That's going to do six, six students. And where will you have these stationed? At, the, it going to be at the Ag Center? Center? It's actually going to be here in our CTA building in the Ag Room. Okay. Uh, we used to have welding up here uh, before I was in Fannin County. Uh, it's, eight, it's in that corner. It's going to be in that same location. Got to get some electrical done. Uh, but we actually have the air compressor already here on site. And we already actually have some welders on site. They're not the most modern welders. Uh, you know, that, now they make them roughly this size. The ones we got are the big ones, but they're still operational. So again, we'll have to buy some supplies and some, uh, some protective gear. Uh, but again, I think to, to get the program started, uh, we've got to have the boots. All those in favor? Unanimous again. Thank you. Item number 10, to approve, to request assistance from the Georgia Department of Education with the local facilities plan. Mr. Danner. Yes, sir. Doug Suits from the DOE called me uh, actually a couple weeks ago. Doug Suits is the facilities person with the DOE. Um, he says, do you know that your five years plan is expiring in June of, 20, of 2021? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, we've got to get moving on it. So again, even though our current five-year plan is in place till 2021, it takes a year to, to work on the next five-year plans. But he says, uh, this is coming direct from Doug Suits, we gotta have board, um, board approval to request permission for the DOE to come help us do the five-year plan. And again, the five-year plan is where we can use our COPS program, the capital outlay program, use state money on certain projects and that sort of thing. So again, I highly recommend this. Um, again, we, you know, we want to do some things there at the middle school along with some other things at the place that we can actually get state money from. So again, this is just an approval to ask permission for the DOE facilities department to help come here and help with this plan. And this plan will facilitate the flow of funds into Fannin County Schools for the pursuit of projects based on the plan. So this is, this is important for funding for us. So uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I recommend to approve the request for assistance as presented in the document from Mr. Danner. Can the Chair have that motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimously. All right. Mr. Danner, thank you. You had several items there and got them covered. So thank you, sir. Uh, item number 11 is update on the FY21 CTA federal and state grants. And with that, we'll ask Mr. Root to come to the front. Mr. Root, the floor is yours. Good evening, board. Uh, as you all know, and I'll make sure that we know that I gave you a very exciting, uh, what was this one, 10 minute long video to, to watch uh, that, that gave the, all the details of this, but for the sake of this meeting and keeping it efficient, uh, we're gonna just update, these are the different uh, CJE state and federal grants uh, that we uh, that we applied for this year. These do not need board approval. However, uh, we thought it was very, very important for y'all to see these grants uh, as well. And so the, the, the CJE grants that we're applying for are the CJE apprenticeship grant, uh, the CJE ag extended day grant, the CJE ag extended year grant, uh, the, the, the ag young farmer grant, the CTE extended day grant, 
the industry certification grant, and that is for our engineering lab that is up for industry certification this coming year, the CJE supervision grant, uh, the CJE Perkins 5 Plus reserve grant, and the Perkins 5 professional learning grant. And again, uh, just for the, you know, for the public to know, if anyone wants to go and watch the really enlightening, informative, fun to watch 10 minute video, uh, yeah, there's just 30, go right there, YouTube. Yeah, there's uh, 30 minutes of videos between <laughs> this and the next agenda item. That's right, but that, that provides a ton of the details as to what those grants are all about. So. All right, so that takes us in, then there's no action needed on item 11? No action That's, needed, that is simply just for, for board update and just to be transparent and make sure you all know all the grants we're applying for. Yeah. Okay, item 12 then is where we need the approval, and this is Perkins 5, Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment and Local Application, Mr. Root. Absolutely, and there's one final grant that we're applying for, and I should also note that uh, all the grants that we're applying for uh, from the previous list along with this one, these are all grants that we've applied for in the past. None of these are anything uh, shocking or different or necessarily new. These are all uh, grants we've applied for in the past. So this one though, this is the Program Improvement Grant and this one does need, this one has a part of it that needs a, a board approval. Uh, it's the Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment and a local application. So what that means is basically um, we have to assess, similar to a school improvement plan or similar to a district improvement plan, we have to assess our needs and we have to come up with a, with a, with a local application that then has all of the goals of how we're going and, and action steps of how we're going to address those needs. And I will say that this plan has been edited and um, updated and shared and, 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 and input has been taken from uh, Mr. Shofi and the, the high school administration, uh, Dr. Watney and the, the uh, uh, assistant superintendents and the uh, CJE department have all had input on this. And so uh, by looking, one, one of our needs uh, by looking at, at, at different types of data and by, by what we uh, uh, accomplished throughout the year is noticing that we do need to uh, address some uh, uh, local industry demands. And this, this is something we put in here, you know, some of, the, some of the root causes for that need are the fact that that is a, a constant need. That is a need that, that, that takes place uh, yearly, uh, monthly. I mean, being able to really tap into your local industry and local business and keeping up with those needs, that's something that is constant. And another root cause, as y'all know, even you know, if, if, if we see those needs, those needs are not always, it's not always possible to meet those needs, uh, you know, because of having to have additions to personnel, classroom space, uh, welding equipment, you know, things like that. Sometimes it's difficult to meet those needs. So uh, those were the root causes. Um, and, what, and we'll look at the goal here in a second that, that attaches to that need. The other need that we, we saw, and uh, this, you know, I have to give credit to the CJE department and for Ms. Dubois and, and everything in the past because it was very difficult for us to dig in and find actual needs based on hard data, hard statistics. But one need that we did see is that our, uh, our non-traditional female enrollment in classes like engineering, uh, information technology, classes like that, STEM related, uh, uh, classes is very low, it was 1.65%. So we really uh, felt like we needed to address that, that need uh, in, in terms of trying to uh, boost the, the, the female interest uh, when it comes to students and, and, and in those classes in engineering and information technology. So uh, we have, a, you know, root causes. We talked about how, um, you know, the, those, those female role models may not have always take uh, you know, been in elementary schools in terms of uh, engineering teachers, uh, we do feel like that's going to change naturally because if you look at what's happened over the past uh, several years, uh, this class coming in to the high school is going to be the first class that had a STEM lab teacher in an elementary school. Uh, and then th that's just going to continue to, to improve, we think, naturally. But we need to make sure that we know that that's a goal of ours is to improve that. Um, another root, another root cause. Uh, again, just kind of um, making sure that that connection is there between STEM and STEAM and CTAE, and I think that we're all on board with trying to make that connection as well. So those were the needs. 
Uh, we had two goals, um, and I won't go into, again, all the different action steps or anything, but the two goals that we had, you can just scroll down a little bit, Mr. Randley. First goal, first SMART goal was that Fannie County High School um, will, um, or, the, or the school system will provide the high school with at least two new CJE pathways over the next two years that align to our local industry business needs. So basically, we're, we're, we're accomplishing that uh, by bringing in the welding and by bringing in the entrepreneurship program, because those were both um, uh, programs that we felt uh, aligned to those industry needs. Uh, so that was the first goal. Uh, so uh, moving down to the second goal, Mr. Ensley. The second goal there uh, is to increase the non-traditional uh, program concentration percentage uh, from a total of 10.78% in 2020 to 13.78% in 2022. So I know that seems like a, that 3% might seem small, but that truly is a smart goal. That's something that we feel like we can accomplish that would, that would help us out there. And by non-traditional, again, that means classes that uh, different genders don't necessarily sign up for. Our male non-traditional non is actually extremely high. It's the female non-traditional that we need to work on in order to, to, to boost that percentage. So that was our uh, plan, and uh, that concludes it, and it's, it's the plan that is uh, submitted for your approval. Well done, Mr. Roof. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make the recommendation to approve the Perkins 5 Comprehensive Local Needs Assessment and Application as presented by Mr. Roof. Can the Chair have that motion? Move to accept. Second. 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 With a question. Is there any discussion? Yes, sir. You suggested that women don't necessarily go for the engineering. What does engineering cover that, that we don't typically think of as engineering? I think of it as someone that builds bridges, etc. And that can be part of it, you know, more of the structural engineering. But, you know, you could also, uh, in that class, you might be covering more on the, the bio, uh, biomedical engineering. I mean, there's engineering that's biology-based uh, that, that could be something that's more interesting to a certain pocket of kids. Uh, so, you know, the, it, it's not just the structural engineering uh, as you're saying. I mean, that's just an example that I can think of off the top of my head, you know, that, that could be something that other kids are interested in. And, and again, um, it's just one of those uh, pieces of data that we found that we need to improve on, is to uh, boost that uh, interest in our female students when it comes to those STEM-related classes. Do, do men want to be cooks and take cooking? Uh, it seems to be the case because our male non-traditional enrollment is very high. So that means uh, boys signing up for food nutrition, uh, boys signing up for uh, different um, uh, health care pathways, you know, such as patient care and things like that. Uh, our percentage is, is very high. So uh, anyway, <laughs> it's more on the other side that we need to try to improve. Any more questions or discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous again. Well done, Mr. Ruth. Thank you. Thank you. And again, anybody from the public, 20 minute video, more details if you want to see it. It's great. All right. Thank you. Uh, approved district financial report is item 13. We'll ask Susan Wynn to come to the front, please. Ms. Wynn? While she's on the way up here, I'm going to take a moment to brag on her. Uh, I received an email from the Georgia Department of Audits that recognized Ms. Wynn as a recipient of their Award of Distinction for Excellent Financial Reporting. And that's uh, something I'm very proud of. Uh, if, if we weren't in the middle of a pandemic and a lockdown, uh, the Georgia Department of Audits actually intends to come up and one of their representatives, one of their officials, come and present this award to our school district and to Ms. Wynn on, on behalf of the school district. So uh, congratulations. So with that said, take us to the financial report. With March the 31st, at 75% of our fiscal year being complete, our local revenue sources are at 98.112% versus 90% from the prior year. Our total revenues are at 87.74% versus 83% from the prior year. Our total expenditures are 70.41% versus 72% from the prior year. This is clearly a, a healthy financial report, and I'll come back to that in just a moment. But 
it. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make the recommendation to approve it as presented. Can the Chair have a motion to approve district financial report? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous yeah, again. Okay. Thank you. The next item is number 14. It's an update on our SPLOS. We're still in SPLOS 4, and this is the SPLOS 4 collection for the month of March. So, uh, as you can see, uh, it's, it's the highest March, actually, for us, but it's coded yellow because it didn't meet the expectation uh, anticipated growth of 1%. It's, it's actually, what is it, Robert? Scroll back over to the right. It's about a third of a percent. I'm sorry, it's, uh, to the left, the other direction. Yeah, about a third uh, was the growth. So we actually showed some growth in the month of March, but uh, you know, my thought is, um, you know, second weekend in the pandemic began to take hold, uh, and so uh, it'll be interesting to see what's collected in the month of April and turned into us in the month of May and reported next month. I am very anxiously waiting to see what that is. Yeah, it's going to be a good indicator of the economy. Uh, no action is needed on this board, uh, but again, thankful for these funds that allow us to do so many things, uh, so many of the items that were approved earlier uh, in just this meeting alone. So, does anybody have any thoughts or comments on this block? Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Wynn, school quarterly financial reports. State law requires these to be approved on a quarterly basis, and these are the funds for each school. I'll turn it over to you. We start off with Blue Ridge Elementary School. And these are from July the 1st through March the 31st of the year. So it shows their beginning balances, receipts, disbursements, transfers. Um, they're all signed off by principals, bookkeeper, myself. You can, and then East Bannon, you just can kind of continue. Um, each, each one is uniform because of our new software. And that's going very well in all the schools. Then we have West Bannon Elementary School. It's very concise and easy to, to look at and read. And then after, you can keep going after West Bannon. Uh, then we have the middle school. And then it'll either be the high, high school. And then the final one will be the CTA. The level of accountability that you've implemented in this, starting with the bookkeeper mm -hmm. and to the school administrator and then to you as the district oversight on this. Um, this is part of the reason uh, in that financial reporting that the State Department of Audits was impressed with this. They sign them every month, they send them every month, I review them every month, and then report every quarter to you. Done a good job with this, Ms. Wynn. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make the recommendation to approve these budgets collectively as presented for the schools and CTA. Can the Chair have a motion for the quarter of financial reports? So moved. Second, second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous in you. Okay, thank you. The next item on the agenda is 16. It's to approve an FY20 budget amendment. Ms. Wynn, you want to talk to us about that, please? Yes, we have the FY20 budget amendment. You can, which are, we'll have to show both of them. So the first one um, is our special revenues for FY2020. So this is all the federal programs. Title I gives you carryover your other federal programs, federal preschools. So these are all the carryovers that we've received from the federal programs. So I've adjusted our original budget, added the carryovers to our budget as of right now. And then in September, we'll have our final year-end adjustments from anything that we've received from the federal programs and amendments to be presented. Okay, and the second item, Mr. Inslee? That will be our general fund. And so this is the same. We have received our midterm allotment sheet from the state of Georgia, which is all our QBE. So you can see state QBE reduced. We had a reduction of 255000 on that line item, um, 41000 reduction. So all the reductions from the state of Georgia that I've received, I've put those in as, as those adjustments, and then that gives us our, our adjusted balance from the beginning of the year to now for our revenues and expenditures. Okay, thank you, Ms. Wynn. Uh, Mr. Chair, I recommend that you approve the budget um, uh, amendment for FY20 as presented, both documents collectively. Can the Chair have that motion? 
So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item is to approve a budget timeline for FY21. And uh, that's uh, Ms. Wynn. I'll turn it over to you. Yes, tonight I'm asking for the approval of our budget timeline. And then on June the 11th at our regular board meeting, I'll be requesting a spending resolution for July 2020. And then also we'll advertise July the 1st in the newspaper for July the 9th, first public meeting for input on the budget. And that will be at 5.30 p.m. And then we'll follow with our regular board meeting July the 9th, the, which I'll ask for a spending resolution for August. Um, and we'll, then we'll advertise for our second public meeting on the 29th. We'll have our second public meeting August the 13th at 5.30. And then also on August the 13th, we will need to decide um, on two. Well, that, uh, that is to decide on the tentative budget which we will advertise then. So we'll have to decide on the date that it's going to be our call meeting between the 20th and 21st. And we'll advertise that in the paper stating what day we'll adopt the budget. It's kind of difficult going into this right now because by this point, the legislature is normally finished. And they're going to come back into session uh, in, in June. Uh, it's June 11th, I believe. June 11th. Yeah, they're going to come back. And, and so, you know, we get a great deal of insight into how we can budget from the, the legislature. And so we're waiting on that information. One thing that we do know, though, from the governor's office is there's going to be an across the board 14%. Now, how that translates is yet to be seen. Uh, but uh, that's a 14% cut for all state uh, agencies, including schools. And um, so that's, um, that's significant. And that, which is, even though we know the amount 14%, we don't know necessarily how it will be applied, uh, but that amount is significant for the Fannin County School District. Um, and what I will say, though, is uh, as I review this information and review the financial report, that we just approved earlier. I'm thankful for three things. First, for being conservative during the past few years to have built a solid fund balance, a reserve that will allow us to weather this financial storm better than many. Um, the second thing that I'm thankful for about the Fannin County Schools is that we are a debt-free school district, and that is significant. And it's, that's significant in good times, but especially in like what could happen now, the fact that we're debt-free is great. And finally, uh, a conservative board of education and district leadership who consistently are, are they're careful and they're prudent with district funds. And um, these factors will allow us to weather this, this potential financial storm better than many school districts. And I'm thankful for that. So, uh, Ms. Wynn, we need approval on this budget timeline? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Chair, I make the recommendation to approve the budget timeline as presented. Can the chair have a motion to approve the FY21 budget timeline? Motion to approve the budget timeline. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, thank you. And along with that is the 2020 millage timeline, which is the, is the next millage. So, Ms. Wynn, turn that over to you. Yes, sir. On, on August 13th board meeting that night, I will present to you a tentative millage rate along with our five-year tax history and levy that we will advertise in the newspaper on August the 19th. Um, and then at that meeting, we will need to set the same call board meeting time so that we could actually set the millage rate and set the budget sometime between August 20th and 25th. Okay, and that will involve coordination, of course, with local government. Uh, and uh, Ms. Doss, Lynn Doss will help us with that, uh, represents both us and the county, and so will assist us in, in getting this approved properly. So uh, this does require board approval, so Mr. Chair, I make the recommendation that we approve the 2020 millage timeline as presented. Can the Chair have that motion? You have a second with a question. That who, was the, who was the motion? We'll, we'll get to that second. We need a motion and a second, then we'll discuss if we can. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. You have a second? Okay. Now, is there any discussion? That 14%, it's already been decided. Yes, sir. The 
the, the going back to the previous item and talking about the building of the budget for next year? Can it be changed or will it potentially remain? I guess if the state chooses to change it. So that's their budget. That that's cut is in their budget already determined. The guidance we've been given is to expect a 14% decrease. What part of our budget does it affect? I'm sorry? What part of our budget does it affect? Uh, Not personnel? All aspects of operation would be affected by that. Excuse me. It would affect our overall operating budget, yes. I still don't understand. Ms. Wins, can you help me? It will decrease our revenues in our total operating budget, but we have a very sound reserve. Reserve, so it's not expected to it, to affect any personnel. We will have less revenue than what we had last year by 14% of our state income. But it does not include teachers. The state of Georgia is going to give us 14% less of QBE revenue money, which is our allotment sheet, which is on our financial statements. So they're going to decrease how much they're funding us. We're still going to pay our teachers the same thing that we want to pay our teachers, but they're not going to give us as much money. We're going to have to come up with that money ourselves. That's what I was saying a moment ago about the fact that we have a solid fund balance, a solid reserve. Right. That 14% is going to be a storm. But that reserve is going to help us weather that storm. I guess I'm asking, do we have the, the money for the same amount, same number of teachers for the nurses? Or? They will cut nurses by 14% of what they give us for nurses. On the approved budget where I have the adjustments, there's a line item that says nursing. There's a line item that says categorical grants. They will cut each one of those line items by 14% of revenue. If you look back at the adjusted general fund revenue that is on that we have approved, I have them listed line by line item. So you could actually go back and take that and decrease by 14 percent and that would give you an estimate only because we don't know what the assembly is going to finally end up with when they come back and pass the budget. But that's what the guidance we've been given is to cut 14 percent. So you're saying, Michael, that you can cover that 14% because we have a strong reserve. I believe that this is. Uh, I believe that there'll be an economic recovery. Uh, I think it'll take time, but uh, our reserve will allow us to to get to that point. Yes, it's my intention to protect uh, all the people involved with the Fannin County School System. That would include the, of course, the students with that reserve, and our personnel with that reserve, and then also the community taxpayers with that reserve. Yes. So the, you know, being conservative in the past is going to help us now. Thank you. You need discussion on the village timeline. Okay, so we'll come back then. So we might need a, yeah, go ahead. All those in favor? Unanimous. Yeah, that's number 18, Candy. All right. Thank you. Ms. Wynn, good job. Our next item is to look at meal prices for SY 2021 and the floor is yours. Good evening. Um, Robert, I think the request is the first one is real well open. And I, there are three documents attached to this, but two of them are from USDA related to student meal price calculations. And guidance does recommend that student meal prices should increase by 10 cents for paying students. Uh, this increase is not required but because the school nutrition had a positive account balance on December 31st, 2019. And families that apply or qualify for free and reduced price meals will not see an increase. So this increase would only be for our students that are, are paying the full price for their meals. And for this reason, I do recommend that we follow the recommendation derived from our calculator that USDA provides. And I think and you have the actual prices on page two. Um, the prices are on page two, Robert, yeah. if you scroll down. Scroll down, Mr. A little bit more. There you go. Um, so it will have our elementary school meal price at $2.35, 
our middle and high school meal price at $2.60, and we would still have a free breakfast program for all of our students that choose to take advantage of that. That's still an incredible bargain right there. Okay. Mr. Chair, I make the recommendation to approve the meal prices as presented. Can the chair have that motion? I make that motion. Second. Any discussion? There ain't no place in Blue Ridge that you can buy lunch for that amount. And get no what you get, no. All those in favor? Unanimous. I did want to um, share with you, we have had some questions related to our current ability to serve all of our meals free to children. And we have this ability at this time because the U.S. Department of Agriculture is allowing school nutrition programs to operate under the seamless summer option due to the unforeseen school closure. Normally, when school is in session, we operate under the National School Lunch and Practice Programs. So because of the emergency right now is how we can offer the lunches for free. I've actually got those totals here. I'll share them in a second. It's impressive. So we have the approval on that. We do. Okay. And Candy, do you have everything you need for the record? Okay. Okay. You good? All right. Next item, then, Mr. Chair, is personnel. Item number twenty, and I defer to you for executive session or not. I don't. Okay. Bobby, you're good. Bobby, you're just called good. We're good, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, go ahead and open your personnel sheet dated May 14, 2020. And I'll take these collectively by date. Under resignations, I have two resignations that are effective May 28, 2020, and that is Ashley Coppinger and Joseph O'Neill. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Can the Chair have that motion? Move to accept their resignation. Second. All those in favor? You name. Okay, thank you. Have two resignations effective June 1st, 2020. That is Martha Chastain and Debbie Dillinger. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, have that motion. You have that motion. I'll second it. Second. Okay. I second it. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, thank you. The next resignation is effective June 2nd, 2020, and that is Dion Riff. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Can you chair that motion? Move to accept. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, we have recommendations, and all of these are pending completion of paperwork and background check. Uh, I will make the recommendation for a centralized registrar effective May 18, 2020, and that is Sandra Silva. Mr. Chair, make that recommendation. Chair, seeking that motion. I make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, the next are for teachers, all for the 2021 school year. And I'll just go through these. Terry B. Flowers, Candace King, Francis Lauer, Julia Lindsay, Hannah, Hannah Nicholson, Jessica Ramirez, Wesley Simonton, and Brittany Todd. Make that recommendation for all those personnel, Mr. Chair. Can the Chair have that motion? You got that motion. Second. All those in favor? You Thank you. you. The next recommendation is for the 2021 school year, and it is, yes, ma'am? Yes. Sorry. Okay. We'll slow down. All right. The next recommendation is for 49% teacher for the 2021 school year. That is Jill Key. Make that recommendation. Can Chair have that motion? So moved. I'll second it. All those in favor? Unanimous again. All right. The next recommendation is for administrator for the 2021 school year, Deborah and Decabellis. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Okay. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Again. All right. Thank you. The next recommendation is for an administrator on an as-needed basis and not to exceed 49%. So administrator up to 49% as needed. Mary Betsy Hyde. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. You, you got, got it. it. You got it. I'll second it. All those in favor? 
unanimous. Thank you. All right, and the last is Teresa Brown in the school nutrition department. She'll be 65% at S, uh, effective SY 2021. That will be at 127 days. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. In the chair of that motion. I'll make that motion. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. So that takes us into item 21, which is superintendent's comments. And uh, first I'd like to say up there in the, is he up in the booth still or where is he? Mr. Motes, there he is up there. Uh, thank you for being so accommodating uh, to use this facility, Mr. Motes, uh, to promote social distancing and give us space to spread out. We appreciate your support. Also, uh, SROK, are you here? Yeah, I'd like to say thank you for being here. Uh, also, Reverend Mathis for the invocation, Mr. Inslee for the pledge, thank you. Uh, speaking of Mr. Inslee, Approximately 89% of our budget is personnel. And Mr. Inslee is our personnel leader. And he does an outstanding job of leadership of this. I commend him for his work to ensure that we are appropriately staffed, all the while maximizing our available funding. And um, he is one of the most conservative people that I know, and I want to say thank you, Robert. Um, Mrs. Rigdon, Mr. Danner. Where's Mr. Danner? There he is. I should be able to see him with that orange tie that he's, he's, he's wearing. Uh, your presentations tonight, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Rigdon, you're doing a great job as our chief academic officer for this school district. You're always looking ahead, and you excel at finding opportunities to keep us moving safely forward, even in the middle of a pandemic, and I'm proud of you for that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Danner, I commend you, sir, for what you've done, the work, uh, as evidenced by multiple board actions tonight. Um, you're moving us ahead, and I'm, I'm so proud of you with facilities and planning. You covered a lot of ground tonight, and uh, areas that are improving our facilities and that are saving our district money. Again, thank you. Uh, Mr. Roof, incredible job. Uh, not only did you have to learn Perkins 4 and finish out the current school year, but you've done so well and given us such a strong start with Perkins 5. Uh, congratulations on the welding program. I'm excited about that board. And, um, and with tonight's approval, our Perkins 5 plan will become the example. Um, and uh, Ms. Miller, where are you? Ms. Miller, there you are. Since our last meeting, with the help of technology, you've led virtual registrations for kindergarten and for pre-K, including today's pre-K drawing, which was great. Uh, you've done a great job with these and um, everything else that you've worked on with student services since March 13th. Um, you're always looking out for our students, and thank you for that. Mrs. Finley, and I'll give you a shout out to Scott since you're here and everybody in technology. Y'all are awesome. Uh, we're way ahead of the curve because of you. And uh, we absolutely could not do it, could not do this without you. And um, I'm excited about the district registrar position. This is going to make us better able to serve parents and save money um, at the same time. And uh, I'll tell y'all, I have a little bit of insight on this. But uh, what folks see in the public with the work of technology is just the iceberg. Uh, with tech, the majority of their work actually happens behind the scenes. And for that, I, I say thank you to you and your department for that. Ms. Sisson, I want to thank you and the nutrition department for preparing meals. And at this point, we have prepared approximately, I think it's just there, over 56,000 meals. Thank you. I also want to congratulate on receiving the state equipment grant. Uh, what was it, 47 districts in Georgia? I think receiving, we were one of those 47. Uh, it's a grant that this is pursued. Congratulations on that. And uh, Mr. Foster, where are you? There you are, sir. Um, I thank you and the transportation department for delivering all those meals. Uh, you've done a great job coordinating and working out logistics, and, and you always emphasize by asking how can the transportation department help. You guys are willing to do whatever it takes, and I'll say thank you to transportation. Ms. Wynn, congratulations on your award. I look forward to a time when the official from the Department of Audits can come to us and can present that award. Uh, that's exciting for Fannie County. Um, thank you for your work on budget planning. You are truly a financial expert, and uh, I appreciate how you're thinking through so many various scenarios to plan in a time when the only thing that you know for sure is that there's an economic downturn. And uh, 
You're doing a great job with that. And this board, the students, faculty, and staff in Fannie County community are benefiting from your wisdom and governance. And uh, I want to thank you for your support that has allowed this district to achieve that healthy fund balance that's going to take us through this, whatever that means. And uh, you're making a difference. Thank you. I want to take just a moment to remember Garnett Webb. Mr. Webb's service to, to this Board of Education, to our County Commission, uh, to our veterans groups. And finally, I want to thank Mr. Shofi for, for the video that he prepared tonight. But I also want to give a special shout out to Fannie County High School. For the last three days, Fannie County High School Assistant Principal Dr. Ramsey called out a graduate's name in our stadium. And that graduate walked from him on the field to a receiving line with Mr. Shofi, Mr. Galloway, and me, and also Heather Collis. And each student had a video and had professional pictures made while their family and friends cheered them on from the track. It was awesome. Um, I also thank David Henson and the SROs who kept everything moving, as well as the high school staff members who worked behind the scenes in the field house getting the kids ready for that and making sure that they had met all the qualifications. Uh, the result was a lot of smiles and uh, on the faces of students, even bigger smiles on the faces of the families that were right there with them. Uh, it was incredible. Um, my smile was among those with my own daughter. Um, I want to say thank you to Bubba Gibbs and his crew. Uh, they kept the whole thing streaming live on Rebel TV for those folks. For all three days, it streamed live on Rebel TV for those folks who couldn't make it. It was incredible. And finally, I want to thank all of our elementary, middle, and high school teachers for their work with the class of 2020. I appreciate the investments that these teachers and these faculties and staffs at the schools have made in these students, and I know that those investments are going to yield huge returns as this class moves forward. I'm looking forward to seeing the many great, wonderful things that they will accomplish. My prayers are with them, and uh, may God bless them and keep them always. And with that, I'll turn back over to you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Have you invited some volunteers to start? Well, is anybody else here excited about the school system that we're in here in Fannin County? That's it's very exciting. Um, you know, I, I look. Uh, <clears throat> I was thinking about it, and I look up and see Mr. Moats up there, and I think I probably gave him a few of his gray hairs. Um, you know, but uh, I look at the uncommon times that we're in calls for uncommon strength. And I see it rising up, and a lot of folks, uh, even those that are viewing on, online, really don't understand the work that I see the administrators and these people doing to accomplish uh, graduation, making it a memorable one. It might not le look like the ones of the past, but I definitely assure you it'll be one they'll never forget. It's, it's going to be a good time, and I see the efforts that have been uh, placed to make sure that it is the best graduation that we can provide in the times that we're living in right now. So I want to thank uh, all of you that have worked very hard uh, for that. Uh, if nobody's told you thank you, I'm saying thank you uh, because I see that effort. Um, you know, it's uh, if we look as an assessment that uh, that he was talking about with CTAE. Uh, he was looking for, Mr. Roof was looking for uh, needs and wants. Uh, I was just talking about that earlier, that, that we don't really have uh, many needs here in Fannie County. It's good that we have a reserve that we can make it through a 14% cut and still move on uh, and really not affect us right now. And so the, the things that we are really uh, striving for are, are really our wants. It's what we, we want to see. We got our needs, but there are things that we want to do and do better. And, I, and I'm thankful for that because I, I, want, I want to be able to provide more and more uh, for these kids. As in the, I'm, I'm, I'm pushed toward the CTAE side, and I'm excited about that. And, uh, but I, I'm thankful uh, that, that we are in a, a community that is so blessed. Can I say that again? We're, we are blessed. And, uh, and and thankful for every teacher that is dedicated and, 
and, and I, I see it because my, my 10 year old's involved and the teacher's checking in on, on her, making sure she's, uh, she's uh, getting what she needs and, and, and getting her stuff done. So I'm thankful for that. And, and although I can't say it to all of them, I'm saying it now. I thank you very much. And uh, I, I'm just thankful to work with these guys that have a heart for that. And a, and, and a leader, a superintendent that is constantly keeping us aware of what's going on and uh, to see the endeavors that are, that are behind the scenes to take place. So I, 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 just, I just want you to, if I could say anything, just be thankful that, that this place is blessed. We got favor here. And so uh, with that, I'll turn it over to the next one. I don't know where I can face that for that or not, anyhow. <laughs> Good job, Mr. Cole. I just want to say we've got a great board, and I enjoyed tremendously working with these guys. I uh, want to recognize Mr. Inslee, Ms. Rigdon, Mr. Danner, Ms. Gwynn, Mr. Roof, and Ms. Shannon Miller, and everybody else that Dr. Guatney has on his team. These people along with the teachers, along with the bus drivers, along with the custodians, have made this great for Fannie County, I think. You know, there's people in other parts of the state of Georgia, and I'm sure all over the United States, who aren't blessed to have the things that we have. It's just unbelievable that we can take these meals out to these children and you and I both know that they're not going to have something to eat unless they get that. A lot of them never get breakfast, a lot of them never get lunch. And I'm so thankful that we can do that for our children here in Fannie County. Uh, the meal, 56 thousand, 56 thousand, tremendous job. And everybody that's had a part in that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Mr. Foster, thank you for, and tell you bus drivers, thank them for doing the safety and running all those routes and doing everything that they need to go and uh, do. Uh, and teachers, I know, <laughs> I've heard it. They would rather be in the classroom is where they're at. Doing it out to the children at home. Uh, but that's our teachers. That shows you what caliber of teachers that we have. And I'm grateful that we have the opportunity, not tomorrow, but next Friday, to have graduation. You know, if I was one of those seniors and this was my time, I'd be very thankful that we could have that. Now, when I graduated in 1968, bang, bang, and it was all over, you know. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, wasn't hardly nothing, but that was 1968. This is 2020. And I'm thankful for everybody that had a part, has a part, in this school system. And that's it. Thank you. Mr. Lewis. I'm going to use the term educator very broadly to include everyone in our system. Uh, I can't imagine how poor God's mind and heart has been through this. Ever since Mr. Gwatney came on board, I've been kidding him about it. He's been tried in every way possible. But when y'all started delivering the meals, Mr. Gwatney called me one day and he was relating what the first day it started and told me about a little boy that was on the side of the road with a half of an umbrella in tattered clothes and they offered him a meal. And he said, I have a brother inside. I'm not ashamed to say I cried with Mr. Gwatney. Yeah. The Fannin County is special. Yeah. And the 
teachers are a special breed of people. I thank the good Lord in heaven that y'all care like you do. I, I wish I had the words to really compliment you properly. You change the lives. You give, you take lives that are ordinary and make them excellent to you. you it's amazing to me the difference that y'all make. And like I said, I, I wish I had better words to, to express myself. But uh, y'all should be very, very proud of yourself. If, if you change one life, isn't that a miracle? But to think that you do it on a daily basis and you report each morning, uh, teachers, administrators, bus drivers, whoever you are, if you carefully care for students and give them a, a, a life to live later after school, safety and just on and on. I pray the Lord bless y'all and reward you for the work that you do because y'all truly are special. And this is, county, as Bobby's always said, this is the best school system. I, he says in the state, I think, but it is. I think it reaches farther than that. So I'll just stop before I start. Uh, I'm through. I want to say thank you to everyone in this system. You have gone above and beyond to accommodate our students through this difficult time, just the difficult circumstances that we find ourselves in. It's remarkable. I'm thankful for so many things. I'm thankful that this board and this administration has been conservative and fiscally responsible and is a we are in a position where we can weather the storm. And I've made that statement a number of times, and, and the times upon us. Those systems that are carrying a heavy load of debt right now are truly struggling, and they're going to struggle more with the cuts that are coming. So we are blessed indeed. I'm thankful for this boss that has allowed us to fund our technology. I watched this other systems struggled trying to come up with some way to provide personal devices for their students. And here we are already in position to, to deal with that. I'm thankful for the, the cold initiative. It gave us a head start on distance learning and the planning and, and, and the thought that had gone into that program truly served us well and put us ahead of the game. I don't want to take too much of your time, but it's an honor to represent and to, to be an advocate for the young people of Fannin County. It's also an honor to, to have the opportunity to be a good steward of, of the taxpayers' dollars. And I'm thankful. I want to congratulate the students who have earned academic achievement awards. I want to congratulate the students that are receiving scholarship money. And a very special congratulations to the graduates, the class of 2020. You are unique. You have dealt with the difficult situations that, you, that we find ourselves in with grace and with perseverance, and I'm so very proud of you. The circumstances that we find ourselves in in no way diminish your achievements, and we're so very proud of you. May God bless each and every one of you. I have to say I agree with everything. I couldn't add a, a word more to any of it. Uh, I do want to thank all of our faculty and staff for, for your all's extremely huge hearts and the way you have reached out for our children and our community, the way you step up in, in ways that's unimaginable. Uh, I wish that everybody in our community can sit on this side of the table and see the effort that y'all put into it and all the heart that goes into it just, just for our students. It's amazing. Um, I believe everybody would look at it a lot different. Uh, so I wouldn't want to add anything or take anything away from what all these other wonderful guys here have said. But uh, I'll leave things with this. I am very honored. It was such a privilege to be there, to watch our graduates walk across and to see their smiles, to see their eyes. Um, 
especially in this time of uncertainty, to see those children in their eyes light up, you automatically lose all concern for the uncertainty. And you see that we're going to make it through this, that there is hope. They, they, they're not worried about it. They were excited. The hope, the aspiration they had, just the dreams, everything, you could see it in their eyes. And it, it enlightened me. I mean, it really did. It empowered me. It was very moving. Uh, I counted it as an honor. Uh, it was grueling. I mean, a few times the weather was a little uncooperative at times, but truly it was an honor and a privilege to, to be a part of that. Uh, wouldn't take anything for that. My whole time being on the board, that's probably one of the things that stands out more to me than anything right now. Uh, if I was to look back and had to, to, to pinpoint one thing that meant a lot to me, that would be it. Just to see their hope and their aspirations as they walked across. It, 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 you know, like it lived to me. So it, it was truly an honor. So with that, I, I'm through and uh, I do appreciate each and every one of you. So with that, I seek a motion for us to adjourn. So moved. All those in favor. Thank you. Thank you.